Let's go ahead and create some silt now. First of all, we're going to start off with our reference images. If we take a look at silk, what you can notice is that silk material is actually shiny. And depending on which side you're looking at it, you can see some bright spots, some darker spots. And in this case, it's not really uh, well or easy to notice because it's just white silk. But if we take a look at this one or maybe even this one, well, especially this one, you can see those bright spots. You can see that we have uh, dark uh, color in the crevices. And if you zoom in quite a bit, you can actually see that this indeed is a fabric, which is indicated by the fabric surface detail. So let's go ahead and try to create something like this. I'm going to put this thing over to the side. And just like uh, from here, we're going to start off by dealing with the first thing, and that is going to be the color. Now, in this case, like I said, uh, silk is very uh, specific due to the fact that depending on which angle you're looking at it, it changes color. Now, we can approach this from two ways. The first one would be to deal with the reflective side, but that will make our material, more, it will make it so it renders considerably longer. And we are trying to make this thing look right. And at the same time, if we can optimize it even better. So to do that, what we are going to do is we're going to be playing around with the diffuse. So for that, I'm going to go over in the diffuse and input a fall off map. Now, right away, you can see that without changing anything, this is already starting to get that look where you can see that we have a highlight, we have a fall off. So basically the, the bare fall off is making our material look as a sort of a gray silk. Now, since that is not what we want, the first thing that we, we are going to change in here is the fall off type. We're going to go from perpendicular down to towards away from the camera mode. As soon as we do that, this is going to get a bit more emphasized. So now we need to change the mix curve. So for that, what I'm going to first off, I'm going to do is start by building up or pushing up the minimum. So we're going to go all the way up. Well, actually not all the way up, but pretty high, something like this. So as you can see, if we do it like this, the black color is almost non-existent. So now we want to push in that highlight, but we want to push it downwards. What this means is that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in three points, something like this. And now push this one down like this. So as you can see right here, we have a sharp uh, black color and a bit of a down, downward spiral with these two guys. So I'm going to move this like so. And right away in the preview, you can see uh, things are changing. So in here, I'm going to try to basically smooth this thing a bit more like this. All right. So actually, this is slowly starting to get that feel. So I can see that I have a pretty bright highlight. I have some dark color in here, but since it's still just black and white, it's not really working well with uh, what we are seeing in our reference image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the colors so I can see it better. So in here, what I'm going to do is go ahead, give it a more darker color something like very dark like this. All right. Now for this one, let's, let's, let's go and do it like this. Just copy it over and now just we'll make it lighter. Okay. Move it a bit. I'm trying to get it closer to what I'm seeing here. So all right, now we're slowly starting to get there. Okay, move. I think this is going to be close enough. All right. So now, once we have the color set up, what we can do is fine tune this curve to be more in tune with what we're seeing 
here in our reference image. So if I move this thing more towards the white, it's going to have a smaller highlight. On the other hand, if I put it like this and increase this one, you're going to see that we get a lot more of this uh, black color. And in this case, if I take a look at here, I can see that I have a lot of that black color. So we can choose based on what we have or what we're going for, just moving this uh, here uh, controlling point up and down, it will control how much of that black we see. The more we go up, less of it is gonna, uh, less of it we're gonna see. If we push it over to the left, even less. So by just controlling this control point, we can uh, control how much of that blue or dark blue color we're gonna see into our silk material. But before we continue on with the other properties, I want to show you just one more thing. And for example, uh, if we're taking a look at this silk, we can see that it's slowly starting to look like what we have here. But the thing is, what happens if we have a silk that's something like this? Namely, you have this bright uh, blue light or blue color. They have this darker color, but on the highlights, we can actually see some pinkish color. Now, if we want to get that result in here, what we would have to do is over in our second color, where we have this uh, um, this color happening, what we need to do in here is we go over and we put input a new fall off map. Now, we go back from here, copy it, copy the original color, come back here, paste, and now paste. So by doing just this, now I can go in here, choose what color I want to have. So maybe something like that pinkish color that we had over there. There we go. And now we just need to control how this thing is going to get mixed up. So if I go Bezier corner in here, go like this, we're going to get less of that pink color happening. Busy a corner here and we can really wrangle it around just the highlights on the corners. There we go. So this way you can have your silk with multiple colors for its reflection properties, which is going to make it really interesting and it's going to give you the ability to have a lot of uh, ways in which you can build your silk material. All right, so now we want to go ahead and do the final thing, and that would be to add in the surface detail or the bumpiness to this material. Now, as we just said, that's going to be the bump. But here is the thing now. Since we inputted this fall off into our diffuse, this means that based on which angle we're looking at this material, that is the color that we're going to see. So by adding in the bump, we're going to change the viewing angle of the material. So that is going to directly have an influence on what color do we get in our material based on how much of this bump we input in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of the textures that we already uh, used up. So I can try to go ahead with something like cotton normal map that we created uh, in the previous videos and see how we deal with this. So I'm going to input here a V-Ray normal map. Input it into here. All right, as I can see right now, the size or the tiling is too big. So I'm going to go five by five. And this should give me a better idea of what I should expect. But here is another thing, though. Now, when you're making your materials and you're inputting like very, very tiny details like bump, you want to really amp up the resolution. But the problem here is that since we're using the IPR, or the real-time IPR, when we zoom in or make this uh, window bigger or smaller, what you're noticing here is that the resolution is changing. So it's not just 
staying at whatever uh, that we have set it to be so i want to change that so i'm going to stop the rendering for now open up my settings for by pressing f10 and in here where we have v-ray you can go down to where it says frame buffer and over here you have this option fit ipr resolution to F uh, vfb turn this thing off so now what happens is that if you turn that thing off it will always render the real-time uh, renderer when you actually turn it off or turn it on the interactive rendering it will render at this resolution so for this what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to ramp it up really high so like 4000 i'm going to play it and now you're going to notice that this thing is going to start rendering the whole image at full resolution now this is not the best thing that you can do especially if you're going to be rendering uh, on a full-on 4k or 4000 resolution image all the time so what you want to do is just select a border and then work in it and after you're happy with it then you can start rendering the whole thing so now i can see much more details coming from this thing which is what i wanted it i'm going to turn this thing off and start working on over here now let's see if i increase the tiling even further so let's go 10 by 10 i can see that yep this thing is slowly st starting to get to that position where it's similar to what i'm seeing here so there we go what we are seeing here is our material and this is what we have in our reference image so now next thing we can do here is i can decrease the blurring uh we should be very careful with this because if we really inc uh, decrease it too much we're going to lose too much of the information or it might even not appear so we're going to try like 0 0.2 all right 0 0.1 all right the 0 0.1 works just fine let's turn off the filtering cool now we can control how much we see of this by this uh, multiplier here. If, if we put this thing to five, it's gonna emphasize this thing or increase it by five times. And now as you can see, it's really starting to change the angle the, of viewing that I was talking about. So this is not what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead, go back to one and increase the bumpiness by just increasing this uh value over here so if i go in and put this thing down up to 60 you know double it down and right away you can see that now on the corners i can see more of this pinkish color but here we go again so the surface is much more rigid we can see much more of that pinkish color coming in let's go try to 40. So it's now going to be just a bit of a game between how much of that highlight you want to show it, show up and at the same time how much of this color or how much of this bumpiness you want to show up. So you can control it by this value or you can go in here and maybe even decrease this to like 0 0.5 and get something like this. In my case, if I compare it to what I have over here, I think this is much more in tune with what I want to have. So there we go. All right, awesome. All right, let's let the whole thing render out and we can see how this thing will look in the end. And actually, since this is a fairly quick way of showing how your material is going to look with the help of the interactive uh, viewport renderer, uh, what we can see is that we indeed have created something very, very similar to what we have over here. So we have the highlights, we have the gradual color change, and in the corners, we even have this pinkish glow. Now, if you're really trying to go after these 
specific colors then we would actually go go ahead and try to mimic it but from what i can see here this is a fairly fairly basic silk material and the great thing about this material is that it doesn't have any information for um, the reflections which makes it very fast to render even at high resolution as you can see over here but since this is silk and silk does have reflection what you can do is always just after you finish this go ahead add a, add a bit of a reflection to it so let's go ahead and do it add a bit of a reflection to it there we go and increase the glossiness 0.7 there we go and now this silk is a much more realistic version of silk that we had previously because now it will reflect the environment around it as well as it will reflect a light bouncing off of itself and since we do have a really nicely prepared surface with the bump that will further help with the glossiness and we will end up with something like this so more more or less now we are finished with the very basic silk material